out there in YouTube land, I'm JD and welcome to my channel. Please like and subscribe if you like what I do and share it with others. And if you want to get a hold of me, contact me at jdwatchservice at gmail.com if you want me to do any work for you. So, what do I have here on the bench today? I have part two of the repair, I guess reassembly of the Hamilton Pocket Watch size 16, I believe. Not an 18 beast, but a 16 beast. I made the part one video around a week ago. So in this uh, video here, I'm going to be reassembling this watch. I'm going to somehow get that mainspring back in that barrel, and we'll see how that's done. Uh, and then I'm going to clean the balance. Oh yeah, we're going to clean the balance. Also, a gentleman uh, emailed me and said, Hey, what about oiling those pallet stones on the pallet fork? What's that all about? So I, uh, I can't remember where I got this from, but maybe it was from Mark. And if you follow watch repair, watch repair channels, Mark's pretty well known. Um, and the oil I used is the oil I showed the other day when I made a video. And it's this stuff right here. So it is 94. Can I actually see that? I don't know. Man, oh man. There we go. Mobius 9415. It's kind of like a grease more than an oil or a gel. Uh, and this stuff, when you put it on the pallet fork on the stones... It compresses when the stone of the pallet fork hits the foot of the escapement. And then when it leaves that foot, it actually goes back to its original shape until it hits the next foot of the pallet of the, uh, of the escapement foot. So there's, there's two schools of thought. One is that you put it on the pallet fork. The other is you put it on the feet. Uh, I've seen uh, videos or books or something I've read that said you, you don't have to put it on every foot. You just have to put it on every third foot. And then it'll pass that along to the uh, pallet fork. And what I found that is that using this oil on a pallet fork will absolutely increase the amplitude of your watch. Um, it just is some uh, another thing that reduces friction on a pocket watch. So, And pocket watches and watches in general that are mechanical are, are all about reducing friction. The gears, the pivots, the jewels, everything you do when you reassemble or you work on a, on a watch or a pocket watch is done with the intent of reducing the amount of friction so the maximum power from the mainspring will get to that power fork and flick that power fork left and right so it'll flick that impulse jewel and it'll make that balance rotate left or right or clockwise and counterclockwise. So it's reducing that friction. So, so using th this particular oil does a great job at reducing friction right at the point where you, where you have the pallet stones uh, touching the escapement feet. I call them feet. There's probably another technical name for that, but but so I, that's why I use it. I know that it works. I've seen the the amplitude increase by using it, um, and at times where I forgot to put it in, and I've had to get under my microscope and use my a very like an oiler, clean it off, and use the oiler to to uh, put that oil on. I have actually seen the increase there as well. So I do have some before and after. Um, uh, information on why that works so well. So, so somebody asked me that, and technically I'm not sure other than other than uh, removing friction. And I know that specific oil is made to stay in place. So once it compresses, its consistency changes through compression. And then when it stops compressing through that the leg of the of the escapement pushing down on the on the jewel surface, uh, then it goes back to its original shape. So, and then it compresses and goes back and compresses and goes back. So that's pretty much it. Um, I could do a little more research on how that works and why that works, but I'm not going to. So, <laughs> so today I've got to reassemble this pocket watch and that's so I can get this off of my watch table here. Because if I don't get it off my watch table, I'm likely going to do something bad. So I need to do this right away. Now this is my watch. So... If, uh, if I have a customer's watch, I'll do this all at once with a customer's watch. Um, I do have one left one job left where I have to throw my lathe onto this table here and complete that fourth wheel. It's just a little too fat to fit through that jewel, and I just have to, to file that down or, or burnish it down just a tad more to fit into the jewel and then mail that back to the gentleman who got me to do the job. So, And then he can clip the pivot and fit the second hand on. Okay. Normally I get all that done, but I've been working very, very hard at work. And I've had zero time to do any of this in the last month. 
and now I've got a little bit of time in the next couple of weeks that I can get ahead of the watch work and get some stuff done for people that I I owe stuff to. So there you go. So anyway, welcome to my channel again. Please share it. Please like it. It helps the channel. It helps inspire me to make more videos on, on watch repair. I know I've got videos on, I got a guitar one up there. I got some magic, uh, card magic videos. I got, I don't know, I do lots of stuff. And um, the only thing I don't have is a video on program management. There we go. There's a video that's really exciting. Anyway, so there you go. So uh, thanks for tuning into my channel. Thanks for comments. I love the comments, by the way. I answer all of them. So if you have any questions, I don't have the answer to it. I have to research it. I'll do that. I don't use chat GPT to get my answers for questions, by the way, although I have used it. It's pretty cool. Um, uh, so I will answer your questions. Uh, I was thinking of doing a live. Uh, I had it booked last night and then I canceled it. wasn't feeling re really well last night for some reason. So I canceled the live show and I just want your opinion if I should do this or not. I've got uh, 7,190 some subscribers and out there in the land of YouTube, um, I need to know if you think it's worth my while to do a live show and answer questions live. If it's not, then let me know as well. Um, and I'll answer questions that are beyond watch repair. So I do work in aerospace, so I can tell you how many wings it takes to make an aircraft. <laughs> there you go. Humor. Terrible. Now, my impressions aren't so good, but I did try the, uh, I did try to do Nick there. I'm not a vampire. It's like watching the movie. All right, all right, all right. So the first thing I'm going to do here is clean my glasses off. So I kind of can see what the heck I'm doing. So just wipe them down. And as I've said in a million videos already, this is my airy loop. Love this airy loop. Flip it down, flip it up. It stays on your glasses. And I've got, and you can do this too, is go to your optometrist and get the extra lens put on the bottom for a times three. So you have your reading on the top or computer on the top actually for me. And then the times three is for watchmaking. So, so I, you know, I've, I was seeing dots. So I went to my, uh, my friend, I said, look, I got a problem. I'm seeing dots. He says, have you seen a doctor? I said, no, just dots. And then, so I went to my optimist and he said, you'll be fine. So as you can see, I took a picture of there we go. The motion works so I can understand how to put this baby back together. It shouldn't be too difficult, actually. So, But I want to put this back together foist as I put this in, as I reassemble an oil. All right, there's the oils. Look at the expiration date on this. I think it lasts a lot longer because it's synthetic. Anyway, this is the 9010. So this is used for um, the escapement um, and the... I use this on the escapement. I use this on the balance upper lower pivots um, so it's very fine oil it's for light amount of friction and as you can see it comes in a container like that so that's that there it's kind of a greenish bluish seaish color I think other people would have a name for that I don't so that's that oil and then I have the HP 1300 which is this oil here and that's the red stuff and I'll use that on the fourth, third, second gears and the uh, mainspring on the top. So I use that for the mainspring as well. So again, a heavier oil uh, still pours really well. Um, these things are really expensive, by the way. So that is HP 1300. Um, I'm not sure if I've heard that called something else, but it's HP 1300. So I use that on the head, like the center wheel, like one is the barrel, two center, three intermediate, four the uh, seconds hand usually on a pocket watch wheel. So I use that for these wheels. And then I've got the microgliss. This is the yellow stuff. It should be the yellow stuff. Anyway, Yellowstone. This is the microgliss. So this stuff I actually use the D5. It's an, again a heavier oil. And I use that on the. Um, the winding stem and the winding mechanisms and stuff so and you're usually yeah so winding winding the keyless as they call it right so I use that on that and then I've got some O naturel grease so this is the 8213 
right? These oils cost a fortune too. So this is the oil here, and this is used for the inside of a, an automatic barrel. So you don't need to use this for the uh, for this pocket watch. It's used for for the barrel. I actually on the pocket watch barrel itself, I will use the um, the HB 1300 and draw a couple of lines across the, the mainspring for these older mainsprings. Um, and that'll help lubricate it over time. So I use this for the uh, top of those mainsprings, but you don't have to do the barrel unless it's an automatic movement. Then I'll use this microgliss, this natural grease, natural grease. So I'll use that. So that's just a recap of some of the oils. And then the one I talked about before, which is a 9415 Mobius for the pallet stones. And I think that's it for the oils. So these oils are not cheap. So that's a quick talk about oils. All right, I've got my world's best movement holder again, the um, Myers number 58 movement holder. Oh yeah, the Miles Myers number 58 movement holder. Oh yeah, what wrestler is that? Send me a note. Oh yeah, how do you feel? Do you feel 100%? I feel a thousand percent, which is way more than 100%. So this is a very good movement holder, by the way. I keep touting it and saying you gotta get one of these, but you gotta get one of these because it's just crazy good. So here we go. This is the watch movement. So this is the lower plate of the watch movement. And I believe I'd like to put in the, um, the winding mechanisms first. Now my problem is it's been a while since I disassembled it. And I got no diagrams for this. So my best shot is what I showed you two seconds ago, which is the, um, the, the actual picture of this. So hang on a light. This here picture is my best shot of reassembling this. So I have a look at that and I go, okay, I think I know how this goes. So I got the parts here. There's one of them. So, and it's always good to orient your picture. So if you're going to put the watch together this way, then orient your picture so it's that way. Did I do that right now? Yeah, maybe, sort of. Anyway, close enough. So this would go in here. Um, I've got a, a clutch here. I think that's called the clutch wheel. And the clutch wheel here is beveled. So you, you got to make sure it's on the right side of the bevel. And then you've got the... Um, is this called the crown? I'm going to have to get my book out and have a look at these parts. I don't want to name them wrong, right? Hang on a second while I look at this. If you want to name a part, you go to the United States War Department. That's where you get the name parts properly. So any other department is nothing. So we got, if I look at the War Department manual, and there we go. And that wheel was called the pinion, according with the War Department. So this one, this one is called the pinion. This little jobby doohickey thing here is the pinion. And then that, the B is the clutch wheel. So this would be, this is the clutch wheel right here. The one with the crown on it, right? I've heard that, I think, called the crown wheel too. And C is the setting wheel. So the setting wheel might not be in this gang of thieves here because it's somewhere else that you have to put that in. So we'll see. See if it needs a setting wheel. Maybe it's already there. Who knows? But anyway, that's the clutch wheel. I can actually see the, the setting wheel on the bottom be underneath this. So did not remove the setting wheel. That is the War Department's setting wheel. Let me open this, open this up really quick and look in the back. Yeah, I didn't bother taking that out. That's the setting wheel right there. Doopy doo doopy doo. There's a setting wheel right there. So there you go. So I just want to put this stuff back in place so I can so I can start to reassemble the watch. So I just look at this like this, and this goes in like this, like this. And then the plunger, I'm gonna be a little sloppy here, I know it. The plunger, this goes in on the other side of this like this <laughs> I'm saying this a lot right and I'll put a little oil on that after but that goes in like this oh that goes in like this so this should be fine like this and it's got a little the clutch wheel 
it's got a little gear that it grabs onto and then these go in like this and this pushes in like that but I've got to make sure this is moved over so it so it's able to grab that so what I've done in the past for that is I put this down like so and then I'm going to make sure this is somewhat tight not terribly tight but a little bit tight come on you can't press the button and tighten it that's the problem so I have this situation here I'm gonna get a little closer for you okay all right so that just sits there that went in nicely I just had to move this forward here um, and make sure it was um, in position so the clutch wheel remember I I don't know why it is that I can't remember the names of most of these these parts here so the pinion the clutch wheel the stem and the pane and the Batinsky so that's in place right now so what I want to do um, I got to get my Oilers out and move this case out of the way so get my Oilers set up here and so I can grab in the oiler and then push in the oiler in the casing and shove in the oiler in the oiler shoving cleaning up and device and up in the top right you can see that so so what I'll do is I want to do a little bit of oiling before I dip down in here so I'm gonna get that what we call the yellow oil before right we're not gonna I'm not gonna name these things all over again by the way so that is not the right oiler so I want to get the right oiler I should change my oilers too this is a fatso oiler here but then this is the yellow oiler I'm grabbing so the oil move this in a little closer maybe so you can see it yeah so there's there is the yellow oil so I'll just you just trust me that I'm grabbing it and you can see me on top too so so I want to put a little bit of that on the stem because that's high friction so very carefully put that on the stem I'm gonna get my holding device here the infamous Bergeron another very expensive tool 7010 poly made or poly, poly, polyamide polyamide or polyamide polyamide plastic I guess in England this would be polyamide so the polyamide plastic I always find it useful to hold these parts down just a tad while you're doing stuff because it has a propensity to pop out so I can do that and then just hold that down a bit and I want to oil here a little bit and I can use the same oiler and oil in the middle just a little bit a tad as they say and then I want to oil these gears right here I just have to do a few because they'll mesh and then I want to oil this part of the shaft but will turn around but this will scrape against the actual plate the lower plate of the movement and for now that's good because when I flip it around if I remember <laughs> when I flip it around I can oil the other side of that too so I can actually use this oil too to, to oil the lower part of the barrel here because this oil is a thicker oil and there's a ton of tension on that barrel so that'd be better for that barrel and put a little bit of oil on it there I'm not too worried about over oiling down here but if I put a little bit it's going to help okay and then as I go around the oiling tree here and I was talking to a gentleman I did his his uh, 7750 watch Bill if you're watching this crazy video and there is a boatload of oiling like a boatload of oiling that needs to be done on a watch so so the next oiling I'm gonna do is I'm going to oil let me stab this in here I'm gonna use the red oil right and I'm gonna oil the center wheel with that the jewel and I'm gonna oil the next pivot over and I could oil these from the top by the way because um, but what I'll do is I'll I'll oil them and let the oil seep into the hole and then touch up after and oil this here 
and these ones here I'm going to use a different oil for so I don't want to do those and then I just want to dab the top because I'll end up oiling these from the other side as well after so so I know some oil will have gotten in there but I can get rid of any excess oil like that and I'm not too worried about excess oil here I don't think I should be concerned these jewels look like they're in very good condition um, and then I want to take I'll just call them uh, red green red and yellow so the greens thinner the reds thicker and the yellow is the thickest so I'm using some of this yellow oil right here where there is a friction point so and just in general if you can oil where there's friction points the watch will move a lot smoother or work a lot smoother so in this case here you're just looking at the winding mechanisms or the which is not like it doesn't affect the actual performance of the ticking of the watch like the amplitude or anything so it's just mainly um, you're looking at uh, making sure that the those parts of the watch are well oiled and this is easy to move around right so look down on this again and make sure that's tucked in yeah it is so the next job I have to do is actually put the barrel the spring back into the barrel so that's going to be a a tricky job but what I'm going to do is move this out of the way and then we're going to do that and there I've got a, f a picture here of the spring in the barrel and it goes clockwise around so it goes this way clockwise around which is atypical of of barrels so I need to feed it into the spring winder the opposite way so I'll have this picture open as I free feed this into the spring winder so let's get the spring winder out all right, there's the spring winder there, and now I've got to look at the barrel here and pick the right size. I think it's going to be the biggest one here. Uh, it might be this one right here, so I think I may have already fit this in. Is this going to fit? Let me see. Oh, darn, it's close, but it doesn't fit, so no prize, baby. So this, this is too big for this barrel, so if you see that, too big for the barrel. So this is the wrong one. I just have to loosen that up like that take this off like this uh, make sure I'm not screwed here put that back in the hole here I think it's in the wrong one anyway move one over These things are colliding into each other I should have sized them right or rightly as they say that's wrong too anyway that goes in there this one doesn't go in here probably goes somewhere else I believe it's this one here um, let me just compare it to this one here these are almost exactly the same size so I'll use this one here um, and I'll put that back in and I think I'm okay from an arbor perspective I just want to push that in there and then tighten this you push it into place here and then you tighten this back here like that there it is so and this should be fine for actually doing this work I've already tightened this a while ago so this little screw here needs to be tightened so you you know you don't go further than this and it lines up pretty parallel with the end there so it's not too bad uh, let me see I could probably put this in a little more a little more and then I want to make sure the lip on this this little tiny lip is facing oh my cut they, they look so bad under a camera I want to make sure this lip is facing me so when I wind the spring in I can see the spring getting tucked in there right so so let's I got to look at and see um, where the latch is on this barrel so what type of barrel is this what kind of a barrel are you so this barrel has got the little tiny it's a T end so the spring is a T end so that's the spring and the spring the end here is a T end see the T there so that T fits into the barrel so now again I want to look at this silly picture again it said I went clockwise right so clockwise and I'm gonna look at the arbor as well to make sure that I I aren't screwing myself <laughs> good English so there's the arbor and is and I gotta look at see how that hooks in see what side the hook is on and that's that'll work so that's good so that is clockwise so that would go around that so 
Sorry about the camera angle. It's going to go rant, rant, rant around this way. So that's clockwise. So if, and I've screwed this up before, if you put this in this way, right, then you have to put it in the spring winder this way, right? So you have to make sure it's kind of the opposite because you're going to push it into the barrel that way, right? So, so let's set up the spring winder. All right, there's my main spring winder. It kind of just moved my camera over. I always apologize for the mess. So if you see any mess on my bench or anything, it's not my fault, it's yours. There. So let me give make sure the spring clears the vise so I don't have it whacking against the vise in any way, right? And just tighten this vise up. Um, have to do a watch check later, eh? So, so there's the spring, it goes in this way. So if I look at the spring, don't touch it with your fingers. If I look at the spring, it goes into the barrel like that which means it goes into the winder like this. And I just have to make sure that the, um, the collet or the grabby doohickey thing on the winder is the right size, and it is. So there's no problem there. So I can just kind of feed that in like that. And then I want to wind it this way, and it may or may not have caught the barrel. So, so you just kind of work it in like that, so it's like this, and I've got it in there now. And if I'm lucky, it'll catch it. And I am lucky and it did catch it. So there you go. Now the problem here is that when I when I get near the end, I'll stop winding. Stop your winding. And I'll let this feed in on its own kind of thing. So you just slow down the winding a bit. And then just like that. I'm keeping my finger over here because I've seen springs spring out of the barrel, which is a nasty thing to happen. So this one looks like it wants to spring out too. That's not good. It's not good, but it's not rare. So that happens. So, so I've got this like this. Now, see, I may have a different problem altogether. If this thing decides to spring out, this is something I'm not, I don't want to happen because I want to get that in the barrel without a problem. So right now it's wanting to come out a bit. No, I'm still, it's okay. Put a little more tension on it. Push the spring in. Oh, don't you touch it with your fingers. No, i got to wind it up a bit more even. There we go. So it's starting to go in. Come on. I want to leave just a little bit of, of the spring out so I can line up the T end with the barrel. Like there. Whoa, back it up, back it up. Okay, there we go. So that's the TN is out there like that. It's out there, Jerry. And now I've got the barrel here. And the tricky part here is you've got a little tiny hole there. <clears throat> and there's two holes on this barrel. One hole, I think there's two holes on the barrel. No, it's the cap. So this is right. So there's only one hole on the barrel. So now I have to take this little tiny hole here. Take the little tiny hole right right there you can see that hole and i've got to line that up with the t end of the barrel right to make sure that it's in place because if i don't do that when i push it in then then the mainspring won't push in properly so I just do that and then when i push the spring into the barrel i'll keep my eyeballs out of the way here because i don't want to go blind on this there it's, it should be in the barrel right now uh, yeah, and then I got to wind this backwards to unhook it. So you take it and you wind it a bit backwards and that'll unhook it. Now if I look at this spring, I have to make sure that that is in the barrel nice and good. So I'll look for the hole there that I had before. And is that showing itself through the hole? Um, no, it's not. It moved. So it's over here right now, which is not good. So I actually have to take this spring out of the barrel and wind it in again and do that job again. Because you can't, if it's not in the barrel, uh, you can't, you actually, you can't put in the, um, if the little tab isn't stuck in the barrel, then you're kind of screwed. So, so I'm going to take this spring out, line it up, put it in and go for it one more time. All right, we got ourselves a spring in the barrel. 
<clears throat> and the T is relatively lined up, I'll say, because it's over the hole, but it, you can see it there in the hole. There's a T in the barrel. And the problem I have right now is that this uh, spring is not grabbing the arbor enough. So it needs to be bent in a little bit. So I've got this tool here. You gotta be really careful using this tool because if, if you bend this in too much, um, it's gonna end up effing up your uh, the curve there. Sometimes I'll use this tool, other times I will I will basically um, grab it with uh, I gotta make sure that this doesn't curve it too much. So I'm gonna curve this in a bit and then I gotta pay attention while I'm doing this. So I'm not talking for a second because I want to make sure that I don't do it too much. And I may want to instead of well there we go. So that's a bit of a bend there. Now I'm really worried that if you do too much of a bend on here, it'll actually break the spring. And then you got a whole other problem. So I do have a bit of a bend there, which worries me a bit. So if I break the spring, I got to go find another spring. And you know what? When you're working on this is my watch, so I guess when you're working on pocket watches, if you if you break the spring, um, see this is going to have a hard time getting past this bend. It's going to have it's going to want to go out again. So, because it bent right where the joint was, right where the hole is, which is never good, folks, never good. I wonder if I can bend that back just a bit without breaking it. I have a feeling that this is going to break. I know, I know what happens with mainsprings, and I may have to order a brand new mainspring for this because I think it's going to break. I don't think that this bend will... bend back super nicely. What I wanted to do was squeeze it around the end here and get it tucked in like that more. So you, you just have to work it. Like mainsprings are a pain in the butt. Anybody that's done watch work will tell you that. They're never easy to put back in. They uh, they have personalities onto their cells, onto themselves. Um, what I can do is tuck the back end of the spring in. So tuck the back end of that spring in here. And then you use a screwdriver to flip out the front end. And that's one way of doing it. So let me see if I can turn this around a bit. It's like that. So it's lined up that way. And I tuck the arse in, as they say in, in the Maritimes. So the arse is tucked in. The arse is out of her now by then I get a screwdriver to work the front end. I'm not sure how much of this you're seeing, but, but if I can bend the front in a bit, I may need a bigger screwdriver here. Just to bend that in. And then I have to make sure on the other side it's catching the hole. A lot of shit that has got to go on to get this thing back in. So I think I've got it through right now. There we go. Now I don't know whether that's catching the arbor though. It's got to catch the hook or, or nothing counts. Nothing counts. I don't know whether that's going to catch the hook or not. Let me grab the uh, barrel with these pliers just a bit, nice and lightly here. And see whether I've got the hook caught. I actually do, I think. Yeah. The hook is caught. So what I don't want to do now is make it go backwards. So there we go, the hook is caught in there now. And I want to be able to wind that in. So I'm hoping this works. And I know I'm touching this with my fingers right now because I'm desperate. I'm desperate, I tell you. So let's put a little bit of oil in there first, okay? Now here I'm going to use the, the blue oil. 
I can hear someone's phone outside. I don't need to put a lot on there. And I definitely don't want that to seep down. So I'll put a little bit of oil on it. And now we need to put the cap on. And I'll clean this off so my fingerprints aren't all over it, okay? So the cap, I need to put the cap on and I need to have that this this spring lined up properly. And where is it? I think it's right there. I'm telling you, sometimes the only thing that way to do this is with your bare hands and your fingernails. So I saw the old guys doing watch repair on a channel and they are in there with both hands so now a bit of um there we go so that's now i think that's caught nicely so that there if you can see that it's caught on this side here and it's caught on this side here so the barrel's in the spring is wound um and i think i'll just rotico this a little bit just to get any marks off of it and this spring was not easy to get into that barrel okay I tried I think seven times before I got it lined up properly it was a pain in the butt um, it's because of that T end it doesn't go out very far so it wants to slip it doesn't grab anything so it's a pain in the ass so there we go I said the A word and I'm going to roll my gears into the erotico as well. So clean those up too. And I'm just going to drop this barrel in so I don't have to deal with it anymore. Because it was a pain in the butt. Very carefully dropping this barrel in. And it goes in like this. And I oiled that earlier as I showed you. So that's done. And dusted. There we go. So now I got to put some stuff away. Now I think I'm going to work my way back from the pallet fork. I think that's the safest thing for me to do. So I'm just going to grab the face here and see what I got in here. So there's the pallet fork. So I'm going to work, work my way back from the pallet fork and see if I can't put all this together without any problems. Now there's schools of thought for oiling pallet forks. So. Um, putting oil on this, I can oil it from the other side, but really, I don't know if that's necessary or not. So, but I do, I see a little bit of a little tiny hair on there, and I want to make sure that there's nothing. There's no remaining issue in the pallet fork. There we go. Now, and I believe that the little tiny, the hammer, the guard pin goes up on a pallet fork. So this pallet fork would go in like this. There we go. Like that. And then the bridge for the pallet fork is this guy here, right here. And these are the two screws for the bridge one screw one and screw two and screw me and screw you so that's it's an interesting pallet fork bridge configuration i think it's pretty a high end it's, this would be a high end bridge for a pallet fork right so so this went through the wash machine with all the underwear and everything else so there you go now i'm going to get in close here for this again too because i can't i want to see what's going on and line up where the uh, where the holes and the pins are. So those are the two screw holes there, and right there. So now I just have to make sure that the yeah the pallet fork is through. So yes, success. And then these screws can go in now. And I want to hold this down. I want to hold your hand. It jumped up on me. 
but to hold it down it jumped up it's back where it needs to be and this is gonna be a long video this time I apologize All right, there's one screw. I'm going to use my big ugly mitt here. If I can get one screw in, then I'm good. Now again, when you put these screws in, don't tighten them until you know that the pallet fork is free, which means you got to look at the, the pivots of the pallet fork coming up on both sides. So to make sure you're not squishing the pallet fork in any way. So. You can usually tell when you tighten it if if the pallet fork tends not to move, then you've got it pinched. So I'm looking at it right now, and it seems like it's uh, doing really well. So I don't think there's a problem. It seems to be, yeah, it's loose as heck. So both pivots are in there. So then you can go ahead and tighten the screws up. And you just make sure they're, they're snug. You don't need this over tighten everything right so so that's good right there right there Jerry right there yeah that's nice and snug so that's fine and now I'm working my way backwards on this because I think I don't have a picture on how this thing goes together so I'm assuming that it's going to go to the way, together the way I want it to so I'll put it in the escapement next and I'll be oiling these all from the other side so fear not That's the escapement wheel, and then the intermediate wheel, which I think is this one right here. Which So the escapement goes in, and the second hand wheel goes in. So the second hand would be on the other side of the watch, would it not? I think it would. So I think the second hand, yeah. This is the fourth wheel. There's a little piece of corrosion or something right there. It's just age. Second, this wheel would go in like this. I think actually I'm too close with these. Uh, this eyepiece. So you see what just happened to me? I think I'm way too close with the eyepiece. So I'll drop this in and back myself off there we go that's in there that's in there and then the intermediate wheel this one here has to touch that one so i'm assuming it wouldn't go this way because it wouldn't be doing anything right so it would go in like this right so this is the intermediate wheel and its pinion is touching the gears so Again, I think I'm way too close. I'm being there, it's in like that. I got to make sure that that when that's all the plates are on, that clears the uh, that clears the mainspring barrel, right? So, and then the mainspring or the center wheel goes in like this like that and I just have to move this intermediate wheel a bit till the, the pinions interlace so there we go so that's in right now I normally would do this a whole lot faster if I wasn't videotaping stuff so but I am so there so now I can I think I can cap these both off. I'm looking at other wheels that need to go in there. I think I think I'm good. I can lower. I, I put I oiled this so this this part here, this trough will already rub against there. So we're no no problem there. I oiled that. Um, I did not I or, or I did not oil the crown wheel, but I'll do it from the other side. Um, so I should be able to just put this over the top, right? Just lay it down and then put some screws in and then lay the other one down so let's see what happens here yeah i think that that should work i 
There we go. So that's in there. And as I can see, it's there's still gear stuff that has to go on. So when you put these things in, they never fit perfectly the first time. So you just move the gears around. And what I found that, that works really well, actually, is to is to loosely put the screws in. So that everything kind of aligns up and then when you push this down like that, everything kind of knows where home is. Kind of like that. I'm looking to see if there's anything in the way here. I don't think there is. So I'm going to take a couple of big screws and put, the, put them in. It's big screw time. And for that I need a big screwdriver. Let me pause and go back. You gotta have I gotta have my golf voice when I'm doing these videos. Eh? So I'm saying A a lot too, and that's probably the Canadian in me. A the golf voice. This is JD at the fifth hole. There we go. I just don't want. I want to make sure that no pivots get crushed. No pivots were crushed in the making of this video. So the other thing I like to do is look at it from the side to see if there's any crazy shit going on. Yeah, this is still standing up a bit here, so I think that there's still some. There we go. That's flat now. That's flat. That's flat. Something was not in there nicely so i heard a click which i usually don't like but see that's that's there right there but what is going on here it's kind of rocking so i don't know there's something like the barrel or something that's not in there right let me see what's going on i think I think it's this this shaft here, or the uh, no, that's right. I'm gonna put the screws in loosely, like I said, and then have a look around, see what's going on. Don't call me loosely. You can see on the edges whether that's in or not, right? So, so let me just loosely put the screws in. I got one screw that looks like it's short. That would be. Maybe I can use it here instead of on the other plate. Uh, no, actually, let me think. Yeah. Let me see if I can use that screw here instead of on the other plate, because that this screw looks like it's short. And it might be fine right here, but if I put it to the other plate, let me see if it goes in. Yeah, no, nothing's turning here. So that won't work there. Which means I gotta somehow pull that out with Rodico. That's the previous watchmaker that did this. <laughs> it's barely out. I can turn it upside down and it'll come out if I do that. Right now I'm serving no purpose whatsoever other than to piss myself off. Because it's just sitting in there and it needs a better screw, so... Come on, Rodico. You used to be my friend. You know what? I'm just going to put the other plate on. That way I can turn the whole thing upside down and figure out what the problem is. Oh my god. There's always something. There is always something. Yeah. 
And I also just noticed that the other screws for the other plate are right here. So the question is, what the hell is that screw I just put in? <laughs> no, the other watchmakers are watching me and going, JD, stop this nonsense. You're making me sad. So this should just pop in nicely. Like that. And again, I'll put these screws in loosely. And then I will work on tightening them up later. See, make sure I get the right screwdriver here. And put these screws in loosely. And figure out what that problem is I have. That's why I like to put the watch back together. After... See this, what is going on here, Jerry? I'm having issues today. That These two screws don't want to go where they're going to go. So I don't know what's going on here. So what I'm going to do is put these ones in, because I think these are the screws meant for it, and I don't know <laughs> where these other two screws came from. Um, I wanted to say they're not... Yeah, they're not part of anything. Something's something's up. Something is up. And I don't think the gear is in there yet. I don't think this gear is in there yet. I'm having fun today. I just have to make sure these are not tight because that would cause a problem. And I need to shift these around. I'm having real fun today. I've done a million watches and this one here seems to be really giving me a hard time. I don't know why. I didn't do anything to it. What is going on? I'm going to have to fart around with this off video and get that plate in place. So I'll use my my adjustment tool here and go in there and just fart around until I get the things to drop. Doing it under camera without holding it up to my face like this is almost an impossibility. All right, I farted around with this. So the way you do it is you hold it sideways and you put a little bit of pressure on the top plate, but you still have, you can leave the screws in, but really, really loose. And then you put just a little bit of finger pressure on the top plate while you jog the the pivots around for the wheels until they hit the jewel holes. So you just put a little tiny bit of pressure on there. But I know that, that it's in right now because I'm moving this and all the gears are moving. So that's good. I still have a problem with this screw here. So I'm going to have to turn this upside down and get the screw out. And I think what happened was the watchmaker, I recall when I took this apart, that this the watchmaker had the wrong screw in there and I remember that from when I disassembled it but everything else seems to be in place here so I don't know if there's a, there is an issue it's all it's in it's all in so so I don't think there is an issue but let me just punch this up upside down and see if the Rodico can grab it What's funny is it grabs it, pulls it out part way, <laughs> and then it basically doesn't want to go back in again. Not sure if I can coax it out with a really small screwdriver maybe. You just coax it.
I think when I yeah I remember when I put this <laughs> took this watch together that screw was in there and it's a shitty screw so it needs to come out I can use my world's power most powerful magnet to take it out but that would devastate this watch there we go I just hooked it in like that and then pull it out so I think the rest of it is good so I think I'll what I'll do let me just look at the other side to make sure I'm kosher on all sides here um, yeah second hand is good all the other jewels are sticking through no problem so I believe I am good it, it's funny the uh, no that's good uh, is that good yeah the mainspring barrel doesn't seem to be down very far so the barrel here just doesn't seem to be seated really well I'm not sure why If I pull down on it, it falls into place, but if it, it seems to be a little loose or something. I don't know what that's all about. It may not be an issue. Yeah. It's examining the watch and touching the edges with my fingers, so you can write me about that too, boys. And what do I need to do now? So... This watch has got lots of personality. So that screw came out. This is a screw, I believe, a watchmaker just threw in there. One thing that's a mystery to me is that there's two screws here, and I'm not sure if I'm being stupid or not, but these two screws here, I put through the wash machine, and I'm not sure what they're for. And I know they're not part of the balance, so and I don't believe they're any of this, so I'm not sure what's going on here. I think that um, yeah, this 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 mechanism here. Uh, let me see. Grab this here, yeah, like that. This goes this goes in over the top here, and I believe yeah yeah. So this goes in like this, right? I'm gonna put a dab of oil in there first, though, before I put this back together again, and I'm gonna put because it's pretty rough on the gears I'm gonna put um, what I called before the yellow stuff it's good there and then I'm gonna put a little bit here there we go and that should be good for that And then, I believe this goes on first, right? Like so. And then this goes on second and fits over the top of this nicely. It's a nice movement. There's no doubt in my mind. This goes on here, but I think it's counterclockwise. Uh, only because it's over the... Uh, the ratchet wheel, I think. Have to look this up again now. Yeah, that's not screwing in, so that's the wrong one. What am I doing today? Something wrong today. I'm I'm off. I am totally off today. I know this goes in here. No doubt in my mind. So why isn't that screwing in? What is the problem? Bad screwdriver technique. That's the problem. I don't want to strip this because I know this is where it goes. <sighs> Having a hard time today. I think I should probably have taken the day off. I might need to support this with my um, 
support this with my tweezers so I can find the threading here to put this in. There we go. Wow, that was not easy. I can tighten that down, but not too much. This is still loose, which is good. You can strip the head right off of the screw if you tighten it too much, by the way. So I'm not sure what evilness is on me today, but I'm slightly off. Normally I whip these things together so fast. And I just have got not the mojo is not. I got a mojo issue today. So mojo riding, mojo riding. I just want to get the click spring out of the, the, the click out of the way here, so I can drop this down. Come on, drop down. And even this seems like it's up too high. Maybe not. Uh, and then I've got I need to poke my tweezers in Rodico and put this in here. There's people online that do watch repair videos, and and when they do them, everything seems like it's gold, Jerry. Everything's going extremely well, and nothing goes wrong, right? Which is BS, because when you're working with watches, it's rare that you don't have a little tiny bit of a hiccup, especially with vintage watches. There we go. Now what I'm going to do, even though that's, there's no screw in this plate right here, so I may, I got to see where the pre, more, more pressure is. I got to find a screw for this because this screw, this short ass screw that I had before is the wrong one. And I, for the life of me, cannot remember where these two screws go. Like what is wrong? What is going on where I can't remember where these two screws are? Go. I just don't get it. I don't friggin' get it. It's just baffling the crap out of me. And they're not, these screws are not, they're not part of the movement. They're not part of the face. They're not, did I throw two screws in from another movement or something? Like, what happened? And these look like plate screws, too. They do not look like, uh, I got everything but one, and I remember that this one here was short, and I was like, all right, some watchmaker threw that in. So let me get a bench key and see if things are... If I can see any action here at all with this, right? I do think I'm going to make a different video for the uh, cleaning of the balance because I don't think I'm going to get to the balance today. It's 3:43, and I still have lots of work to do. Unless I get some sudden burst of energy, which I don't feel I'm going to have. So let me get this. I want to just make sure this mainspring can wind. And my bench keys are even effed up today. I think I just need to spend more time making, doing watchmaking, less time doing work. That. You idiot. Didn't tighten these down. I was being a good boy and I didn't tighten them down. Of course, the the crown wheel or whatever slips when you do that, right? Or when you don't do that. So let me see if I can find home again here. Now, the question here is, will the pallet fork go back and forth? What do you think? Let's get a close-up here at this. All right, there you go. If the pallet fork snaps back and forth, we're in the money, Jerry. We're in the money. Uh, yeah, we're good. Now, with all that yapping about oils, I forgot to put. I forgot to put this oil. Where is it? I forgot to put this oil on the movement. Right, so I've got to now put this oil in there. So what I'm going to do is very carefully, I've got to get deep and dirty here. So I'm not sure if I can do this. I, the only way I can do this for you're seeing it is if it's sideways like that. Right, because I can't. Yeah, that might do. 
because I can't turn any other angle without hitting the camera. So I know you're at this. You can see me at the top. There you go. Wave hello. Um, <clears throat> but I want to put a speck oil on this watch here, and I want to put it where those pallet stones are. That's one. And you don't need much. Let me see if I can touch the other one here. If I move the pallet fork back, then I'll be able to get access to the other one. So hang on. Like that. So the pallet fork is now back, right? As you can may or may not be able to see. And now I can dive down here, I'm trying to film this while you're doing this, and put some oil right on there. Here we go. That should do the trick. And I'm going to just move this. I'm just going to move the pallet fork back and forth a few times so it transfers the oil nicely. All right. So again, if anybody remembers where these go, <laughs> let me know. I don't believe they go on the other side. So I, this is like a friggin' mystery. Why do I have these two screws here? And, and just why? They're not, they're not case screws because I've got the case screws here. Those are the case screws. So, and they're not even the same screws. So some watchmaker had a heyday with this. So this was maybe a Franken watch because it's got the Franken, it's got basically the Franken look, eh? That comes right out of Dr. Frankenstein's lab. So that's the Franken watch. Hairy arm time. So what I'm going to do is find a friggin' screw for this to put right there. Otherwise, I'm not going to want to put this back together without that screw. So let me go get some screws. Well, while I'm in the neighborhood, I might as well do a little bit of oiling too. So I want to, I'll pull back a bit so you can see what I'm up to. So what I want to do is oil, um, let's jab that in there. I want to use the heavier oil on the center wheel. So I'll end up using the red oil. And that red oil, let me go back here and grab my cans of oil here. The red oil is the 13, it's, it's the... Yeah, the 90, 9104 or the HP 1300. They're, both of them are, are good. The numbers are both good. So there's 9104 or the HP 1300. So I think H, HP 1300 is a good name. So I want to put a little bit of oil on here just so I don't forget. You don't need a lot, but I think I'll just put a goodly amount and then dab it, up, dab it later. Little dab will do you later. Here, that's good. That's good. And I'm going to go right to the escapement with this. And again, you don't need a lot of oil, so you got to be very very careful when you're oiling the watch to make sure you don't over oil it. So now I'll do some screw hunting. As you can see from camera XYZ, I have boatloads of screws. So what I want to do is find a screw that's the same as the other one that fit in there. And I could likely eyeball this because I've, it's, it's going to be in one of these containers. So I do have this full of screws here too and this this is a good one here and typically I end up finding screws in there and then I've got this one here has got a ton of different watch screws so this one here might do as well I think I can see one right now that might fit so the screw is out so it was Rodico and Perseverance so and I'm back to hunting again so I think what I'm going to do this time is I'll put the head in first the head fits the rest of it might fit so put the head in 
and then test the rest. Now I think this is another one that's going to go in there and be too friggin' short. So I want a longer head. I want a longer head. Like this one here. So Again, this one might be too whatever. Yeah. Yeah, I think the threads are too thin on that one, so I won't use that one. Um, and I think this one here this one here just doesn't fit. These are the ones that I gotta I'd have to trim down somehow, right? So I'll just keep hunting here and see if I can find the right screw. This is like a pain in the butt. Hamilton, why did you not use standard screws in your watches? So we've got all these K screws and or plate screws, and none of them fit. None of them. But this one here. This one here is awkward. Yeah, the head doesn't fit, so. Anyway, I'm not going to bore you anymore because I'm sure you've turned it off by now. Alright, I'm hunting super deep. So I'm going into every screw thing I have to see if I can find anything that would fit this. I just want to open it up and go, there it is, and then throw it in. I think these ones are probably too small, but I'll hunt through the million screws I have here. And some of these are magnetic. They're in balls. Balls, I tell you. Some of them are magnetic. And then some of them are just stupid. So every now and then you get one, you go, oh, that's it. No, it's not. Nice try. God. To find a screw. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I found a screw. Now, the screw is is the same thread type the head is actually a little bit more shallow so you can see it in there so when I screwed it in like this it screws in perfectly and if I tighten it like this it tightens up nicely so so that will do that's good enough for now I don't know if I'll ever find another screw that will fit in there but that's good for now that means I can put this one back the only other option I might try at a later date is to take this one I'm pointing at here and file that down. So I want to get this one in here quickly as it's, there's a, uh, I don't want that plate to pop off because it's under a little bit of stress right now. So that's uh would worry me a bit. I'm just going to screw this back on right there, tighten that up. So. So that screw kind of worked. I don't think there's another option other than uh, maybe tomorrow I'll put that in my lathe and see if I can cut this one down to size because I think it just needs to fit in here and I need to remove just a tad of material around the, the head of that screw to get it in. So, And this was the one they had in that was the fake screw. So that's useless. I'll throw that back in the bucket. I don't think there's any other screws in here that have the right thread type. That's the the challenge of doing this is the thread type has to be right. And if it's not right and it doesn't fit then it doesn't work. So, so there you go. So that's enough screw hunting for now. Um, put this one back. I don't need that one. I'd like to keep this one in case I decide to modify the head on it. So I'll just put that right there for now. And I can in my lathe, because I think the thread's the same type so in my lathe I can take material off the head of that screw and it's not that difficult to do but I'll wait till I get the watch back together again and do it then. What I think I'll do right now is put that balance back. I haven't cleaned it yet but once again uh, I'll put it back and see see if the watch starts a ticking right and it should start a ticking and then I'll do yet another video on cleaning the balance. 
so hang on I got to put all these screws away all right let's just see if this movement actually works so I'm going to peel it in from this side which means I got to take the pallet fork and move it over this way and I usually grab it like this um, like this and then it's been sitting there for quite a while I've got the screw for it right there but I, you just do this and then you tuck it in like so and you want to make sure the impulse jewel is on the other side so you do that and then you turn it around like this and sometimes it takes more than one time to do this because it, it sometimes a uh, these watches can be finicky so there so it's running um, and I might just put the screw back in here let it run for a while um, and then I'll do the balance later so I still have to oil it and stuff so I'm gonna put the screw back in and like I said I like to support the balance cock while I do this because I don't Because sometimes the darn thing will just fling right out, right? There we go. There we go. It's obviously working. Um, likely magnetized. So let me get my little compass out and see if I've got a magnetic feel on that balance. I probably do with its age. So, and it is. Now you see that magnet on the top rattling back and forth slightly? That's because it's, the watch is magnetized. So that's not good. But anyway, so what I'll do is I'll, I'll let this run and then I'll clean the balance tomorrow. I'm a little tired right now. And I know if I do it right now that I could screw it up. So speaking of screwing it up, I'll just take this screw that has no home and put it over here. And then there's those two mystery screws um, that are way over on my mat here. And I just don't know what they're from. They would normally be from, a, uh, from the uh, pallet fork, the bridge for the pallet fork. But there ain't no need. Ain't no need. So that's that's and while I'm horsing around here do I want to have a look see make sure this runs upside down too which it does it's good stuff so you want to make sure it runs in all directions and I do need to do work on the balance but I'm a little tired right now and I know that if you start doing this kind of stuff while you're a little tired then you'll screw it up I also have to oil the pivots back here and and I need to just move that balance so it doesn't foul in any way. There, I can do a little bit of oiling while I'm because that doesn't fatigue me. So, <laughs> but I do have to remove the capsule from the balance here and do that as well. So, and oil that. But I'll do that with the balance out. Oot. Yeah, that was a hell of an adventure trying to find the stupid screws. Now you don't want to put too much oil where the second hand is because that will ride right up. And that is not a good thing. So, not a good thing. Like that. I'll leave the face on it off it for now because I don't want the face on it while I'm playing with the balance, but I'll oil this post anyway. And these are some of the setting mechanisms here that I need to put a little bit of oil on right there. That is a spring. The spring is sprung. And while I'm on this side of the watch, I'll do this clutch wheel. 
Actually, I want to use my yellow oil for the clutch wheel. So let me get that out. And our crown wheel, clutch wheel, whatever. Not sure what to call it. <laughs> I can drop a little tiny bit of oil on here too. That'll be for setting the time at a later date. So there's going to be a part three now because I've got to take the balance off and I've got to oil that up nicely. It's ticking nicely right now, actually. It's got some half decent, not fully decent, but half decent amplitude. And I don't have a full wind on it. I'm still worried about that mainspring snapping on me. So, um, and I've got that deep screw in here, but I will, I'm going to go through an adventure here and take that other screw this one right here and reduce the size of the head on that screw and see if I can because that's I think that'll fit really nicely in there so because I can't find another screw for this so we'll try this one later on and I'll leave this with the other screws here I still have um, a lot of parts to put back together so I still have to, to uh, put in the cannon pinion I'm not going to put that in now that's the mystery screw, and I'll remember what that is. And then I've got to put in the seconds wheel, or the minute wheel rather, and then the hour wheel in there, and then this here, which is the, what is this called? The hour wheel, oh, I don't know, never remember this. I always replace them too. So you, you take these, they're U-shaped here, and if it's flat, you just make it a little bit U-shaped like that. And they go on like this right over the hour wheel so i'll do that tomorrow and then there's this crazy ass hand here <laughs> not sure what to do with that and then the case back so i'll just put all this aside for now and that's it for now for today and that was my watchmaking adventure there's these two screws here okay i do not know what these are for i'm going to throw them in with the rest of the screws here but they went through the wash um, you know, unless I get a friggin monumental thought they don't fit anywhere in here so what the heck are they for two rogue screws and they came out of my my washer and I'm not sure what the hell they're for anyway we'll we'll figure that out later so anyway thanks a lot for watching this video uh, it's a bit long um, and boring but you can fast forward and don't forget to like my channel and we're going to uh, get the watch going again here and we're going to uh, take the balance off tomorrow and just do a cleaning the balance video and i'm going to i'm going to dunk that balance hairspring and all into into lighter fluid and i'm going to disassemble the jewel on the top pop that out and clean that up and i'm going to flip the watch around and i'm going to take the cap jewel off the bottom uh, the lower pivot jewel and clean that up and I believe there's one more cap jewel. I think there's a cap on the... Uh, no, there was no cap. That's it. I think that's it. So, and I think this is a 17 jewel. Yeah, 17 jewel Lancaster. It's a beautiful old watch, right? So, it'll be nice when I get it back together. It's got a nice case. There's the case there. So it's got a pretty good case. I think, I'm thinking somebody made this bale for the case. It looks like home, a homemade bale. It doesn't look like something that would come with the watch. Um, just because it's not, if you look at it like this, it's not symmetrical. It's wider on one side than the other. So I think the bale maker was at the, was doing some bad stuff. So I may pop this out and find the right type of bale for this watch. So lucky I didn't pay a lot of money for this thing. But anyway, ticking, that's all good. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.